Hello and welcome to another Time Travel with Tim. Today we're going to take a look at the first half of Sawmill Run Boulevard, which technically, if you're looking at it historically, is actually the second half because it was built last. The boulevard is named after Sawmill Run Creek, which flows about nine miles through southern Allegheny County until it empties into the Ohio River just under the West End Bridge. It was named after the sawmill which existed there to supply lumber for Fort Pitt at Pittsburgh's Point. It flows through a number of communities until it reaches its mouth at the Ohio River. Sawmill Run Boulevard was created as part of Allegheny County's 1928 City Beautiful program, which also included the creation of Ohio River Boulevard, Allegheny River Boulevard, and Mossside Boulevard. It runs from Library Road in Overbrook to Carson Street in the West End, with West Liberty Avenue and the Liberty Tubes right in the middle. This part of Sawmill Run Boulevard is known as the West End Bypass, and we'll be coming back to it a little bit later as it was the, the last section to be built. But right now, we're going to jump to the middle at the Liberty Tubes and head back this way. The Liberty Tubes were completed in 1924 and the Liberty Bridge in 1928 which gave motorists a direct route to the city of Pittsburgh without having to go over or around Mount Washington. This led to an explosion of growth in the South Hills of Allegheny County as, as well as a massive influx of people all using the same route. As you can see, the dirt roads leading to the tubes were disastrous. As you'll see, the, the area is almost unrecognizable from the way it was about 100 years ago. The only constant being the transit bridge to the South Hills Junction. After the tubes opened, businesses and residents began to petition for a road that would take them to the West End, including a bridge that would take them across the river to the north side as well as to McKinley Park and up the Bronzeville Road, also to Bosman and ultimately to Library Road. A boulevard was just the answer. So in early 1929, money was approved and, and work began on the first phase of the boulevard from Library Road to West Liberty Avenue which was completed in December of 1929. We'll highlight that in part two. As I mentioned, before the tubes were built, most people going to the city had to go up Warrington Avenue and down Arlington. But as traffic increased, there needed to be some alternate routes, especially on some of those less maintained roads.
The road in this direction was a, a narrow dirt road called Quay Street that led to Crane Avenue, which took people under the railroad tracks to Banksville Road, and still does. So let's continue north on our journey to the beginning of Sawmill Run Boulevard to what I think is one of the most interesting and fascinating parts of the journey. There was no road here in 1930. It, it did not exist. I've driven through here hundreds, probably a thousand times and never realized the engineering marvel I was experiencing. Look at the tops of those hills on the right-hand side. They used to extend across the road and beyond. The cut they made through the hillside was over twice as deep as the cut made to build the Panama Canal. The engineer in charge said that to his knowledge it is the biggest cut ever made in roadway construction. And while my guess would be that that's been surpassed by now, at the time, it was quite a feat, and, and looking at it today, we would never know. So let's take a look at what they were talking about. The train trestle that you see in the distance there was built to carry trains to the Wabash Tunnel, which opened in 1903. The trains from the Wabash Railroad and later the Pittsburgh and West Virginia Railway used the, uh, used the hillside there to get to the tunnel and the Wabash Bridge into Pittsburgh. The trestle you see was built to accommodate the trains when Sawmill Run Boulevard was built. But, but, the, uh, but they stopped running in 1946, and it was simply used for a parking lot until recently, as we shall see.
The new boulevard ended at Woodruff Street, and while the streetcar tracks you see here continued on the right to the west end, the little dirt feeder road to Banksville and the west end was in no condition to handle the highway traffic of the new road, and that became a problem. Seventy-eight years after the last train crossed the bridge, it was opened up in August of 2024, removing a severe pinch point in the four-lane road. Less than two weeks after the opening, the city and the county came to an agreement that the county would foot the bill for an extension to a traffic circle connecting Sawmill Run with Banksville Road and Woodville Avenue to the West End. Let's take a little drive down there and check it out. The Fort Pitt tunnels were only a dream at that time. This was the location of the traffic circle. But there was still a problem. Once people got to the traffic circle, they still had to navigate their way through the West End to the Point Bridge to go downtown or the West End Bridge to the north side, which was built in 1932. Compounding the problem, the South Hills began to grow rapidly, leading to a straightening and an expansion of Banksville Road to a four-lane road. Problems in the West End continued to mount. It took 10 years, partially due to the 
participation in the war effort, but the West End Bypass construction finally began in 1949. The bypass was completed in August of 1951, only to close six months later for almost a year and a half, until June of 1953, so the traffic circle could be eliminated for the Parkway West and work could begin on the Fort Pitt tunnels, which opened in 1959. So that concludes part one of Pittsburgh Sawmill Run Boulevard. I hope you enjoyed it. Look for part two where we will explore the section between Library Road and West Liberty Avenue and the Liberty Tubes. <laughs>